this morning uh, i'll bring you few uh, thoughts from the uh, second kings chapter 4 um, it's about the shunamite woman and i believe the lord will speak to our life for, for few weeks i was meditating on this and also i shared this in my sunday services uh, in pune but i believe it will bless you and this i know i have titled it as you know the heart for kingdom of god okay heart to give for the kingdom of god and um, i know you are a wonderful giving church you might have heard this message many times because we know pastor shreen is a great bible teacher and he has blessed us but you know today the holy spirit of god will speak to your life in a different way or maybe new way a fresh way a reminder to your life that will bless you bless your families you know it is in second kings we read about uh, women uh, from uh, second kings chapter 4 verses 8 to 10 i'm right, i'm reading for you now it happened one day that elisha went to shunem where there was a notable woman and she persuaded him to eat some food so it was as often as he passed by he would turn in there to eat some food and she said to her husband look now i know that this is a holy man of god who passes by us regularly please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it will be whenever he comes to us he can turn in there and i was reading this and the so many things we read in this story friends you know one of the thing that you know the shunamite woman is a young lady in the story we read that her husband is a elderly old man and she says this i look like you know whenever elisha is to go from she, that place you know she is to invite him make made him sit and eat the food there and one day suddenly said hey listen i think this man is a holy man of god that's very essential you know it was not just she come came to the conclusion but she said i see this man is a holy man of god and i was thinking what made her saying that and i believe she had seen so many men but this man was a different man his eyes his looking his 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 speech his lifestyle was a different and that's why she said he is a holy man of god ah, and she started doing something she said i want to do something for him i want to do something for kingdom of god <laughs> i want to do something for this man of god and she said hey let's prepare a place let's prepare a house friends you know this is what she says she opened her house for the work of god opening a house for god's ministry opening a house for connect group in india we say cell group opening a house for some families who are you know troubled opening a house for the youths who can come and you know experience the love of god and that's that's what i started hey my god it's not just what it speaks to us friends whatever written in the old testament if you read in romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatever things were written before were written for our learnings that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope these are le- these are written for our learnings that we should learn out of this so asking god lord teach me what i should you know it's one of the thing that you know open your house and what i learn 
she does it without expectation. No expectation. Just for the kingdom of God. I want to do something for the kingdom of God. That's what her heart is. You know, I believe, Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. That's wonderful. That's great. But doing things without expectation, not expecting anything. She never thought she will get anything. But I'll tell you what blessing she got. In that whole chapter, we see God has blessed her with so many things. You know, it's like a Rebecca. Rebecca represents the church, the Isaac's wife. Rebecca represents when that, you know, Eliezer comes to the well and she, he prays, Hey, Lord, send a girl who will say, I will give you water and to your camels also. You, you are a well fam familiar of camels and how much they drink and we know that story might have. Okay. But imagine, you know, she comes and she gives water to him and to camels and what she receives, you know, it says she receives two bangles of ten shekel of gold. Two bangles of ten shekel. You know, she didn't know that. She was not expecting. She did everything without expecting. But God blessed her. Hallelujah. Can you say God blessed her? Everybody say without expecting. Hey, this, this, is, this is what we need to understand. Doing for the kingdom of God without expecting. But God takes care of our life. You know, if in India, if somebody says, hey, there are, there are two bangles of ten shekels of gold. You know, I was, I was, <laughs> I was thinking, what is a ten shekel? It is 100, 113 grams uh, uh, one bangle of 113 grams, two bangles of 113 grams. Wow. In India, they will say, hey, or bring more camels, I'll feed, because I'll get the gold. But here, Rebecca never had that heart. It's a church without expecting doing for the kingdom of God. That Shunammite did the same thing, you know. What happened in Rebecca's life? You know, not only she got the gold, her family received lots of gifts. Not only that, she received a life partner for her life. Amen. That was a blessing. But what was the life of Shurmanite? You know, what are the things she received? Anything that you do, even whenever you open the, your house, your home for the kingdom of God, God always thinks, what? can I do for you? This is what the word says in 13th verse. When you read verse 13, or uh, let's read yeah, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 13, it says, and he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for kingdom of God, for us, all this care. What can I do for you? My brother, my sister, this is the heart of God. If you do any simple thing, anything for the kingdom of God, God's in mind of God, what can I do for Him? What can I do for them? God thinks for you and me. Praise the Lord. You know, not only that, you know, this, verse 14. God asked, who you have done this for me, what can I do for you? Again, repeating verse 14. And you know, her answers mark it. She says, Hey, I, I'm fine, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. You read in 15 and 16 verse, I'm with my family, I don't need anything. But Geheji, you know. He came to know that her husband is old and she doesn't have a child. And she said, hey, listen, Elisha, she's barren. She's a barren. And then in verse 15, see, this comes to her life. 
first thing, her barrenness is gone. When you do something for the kingdom of God, my brother, my sister, your spiritual barrenness is gone. Your barrenness, literal barrenness is gone. <laughs> you know, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time, next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, mark that verse, you know, verse 16. No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. And I was thinking, hey, you know, the man of God is speaking, holy man of God is speaking, and she didn't have faith for that. Don't, don't lie to me. Don't speak lies to me. Please. And she, she was not ready to receive that. But I'll tell you one thing, friends. God is not a debtor. Never. You do anything for the God, He always blesses you. Amen. She never had faith. But second thing, you know, second point that I was seeing to verses from 18 to 23 and what happened friends when she prepared a house or she gave her house for the man of God or the kingdom of God and the work of God she received a faith faith to raise her child from dead and that's what you know she never had faith she said, no, 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 do not lie to me. Do not lie to me. At that point, she never had faith. But you see the story. You know, one day, the son was playing. Now, the son has grown up and he was with the father in the field. A hot son. And he said, hey, my head, my head. Maybe he's crying or I don't know what was it. And then father calls up to the servant. He said, take her to mother. And he, he brought him to the mother. And mother takes and Bible says, it says, you know, from morning till two o'clock, that son was on the lap of mother. On the lap of mother. From morning to two o'clock. Maybe three hours, four hours. She was trying, you know, trying to console him. He may be crying. I don't know what was the situation. But, you know, I, I want you to start imagining of that. On her lap, she's sitting on her lap. The sun is there. And Bible says at the mid of the day, the sun died. At the mid of the day, then... What happens? That's the biggest thing, okay? Till noon. And the, he then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut the door upon him. Went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkey that I may run to the man of God and come back. And what happened here? So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. Everybody say, it is well. Hey, everybody say, it is well. What was the well? What was happening? What was good for it? In few minutes away, the sun died on her lap and the words that she was speaking my brother my sister i believe when she opened the house for the kingdom of god she had experienced uh, ex she has experienced something beyond because she had experienced her old husband becoming a you know a young man <laughs> She has experienced something. Listen, when you do something for the kingdom of God, you change your family life. You change your family situation. She has experienced something different. And her faith level has grown. Her faith level has gone up to a time when she sees a dead situation. The dead situation can be 
Now, at this situation, she says, all is well. Everything is fine. Why? And she understood the power of her words. This is very essential, friends. You know, this is very essential to understand the power of your words. Because she's not just saying one time. If you go to verse 26, she, the, now the donkey and the servant and the, that women, Shunammite, they go and they reach to a point where the man of God, Elisha, sees and he sends Geheji. Hey, Geheji, go and check what's happened. And verse 26, you know, it's a... Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. It's, 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 you, know, you know, she was repeating her faith. She's speaking. My brother, my sister, I'll tell you. You know, faith is activated by your words. Your words, what you speak, it affects in your life. In my life, I experienced him so many times. You know, and I have experienced words. Some days ago, I had a boil here. And it was growing, growing. I said, I knew the power of word. I said, hey, boil, leave. Go out of my body. And next day, it started paining, Pastor. It's, it, it started Paining very badly. I said, I spoke to that it should go. And it's paining. Day after, it pained more. It became red. Day after, it ripened. And for the day, it came out. And the pain and the boil left. Hallelujah. Listen. If something is paining, it's not that God is not there working, okay? God works. I understood the power of words. You know, I have a limited time. I will not give my testimonies. But this, 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 but word of God says, it's, 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 it's Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. You know, this woman, you know, the Geheji came and says, hey, listen, Hey, all is well. Everything is fine. She's all is well. She's careful about her speech, about her words. Word of God says, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. Are you speaking life in your life? Maybe you don't have, you know, maybe your son is not dead. Your situation, may, but in any, any, your dreams, maybe some relationships, maybe you have some issues that is, you feel like is dead. Situations are dead. But my brother, my sister, from this example, you can learn that you can receive your child, your, your situation, which is dead, to, it, it can become alive. Hallelujah. Need to learn some things from these women. Uh, Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, uh, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what it is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that you who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. There's a spirit of faith in the words. She has learned something. Now, how did she got the child from dead? And I, I, was, I was thinking, I said, what happened? Now, Geheji goes and she says, everything is well. Everything is well. Hey, nothing was well at home. The baby was dead. Miracle was dead. She received this miracle child and that was dead. Not everything was well. But she was, you know, I was thinking, even in uh, India, I do not know about the mothers, if baby starts, you know, sneezing, <laughs> everybody will go, hey, you, know, you, you got cold. So medicine is given and so, you know, 
But this woman, she's a woman of faith. There was no faith in her life. She received faith, friends. But don't, for, don't forget, she prepared a house for the kingdom of God. She opened her house for the glory of God. And the faith that comes from above is a great faith that will change your situations. She goes, she goes and held, you know, it's verse 28, what she has done. Actually, she, what I was thinking, you know, she lifted her, her, her son, went and kept as the, you know, the man of God's bed. In other words, she was keeping that son on the word of God. Because the man of God has promised her for the son. And she now reminds the man of God, verse 28, and so she said, did I ask a son for my Lord? Do not deceive me. Didn't I say, do not deceive me? In other words, she's reminding your words, I believed. And we know the story. You know, Elisha sends us, Geheji, hey, take this staff, Go and put to the mouth of the child. But then, you know, it looks like the women was very much perceiving that man of God should come because women, I think she knew Geheji somehow. You know, she knew Geheji. You know, Geheji will salute somebody and, you know, something will become wrong. And she's, he, she, he holds, she holds, I want you to come. And the man of God goes and we know the story that, you know, the son is raised from the dead. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, anything happens in your life, bring that situation, dead situation, maybe, you know, whatever is dying, whatever thing, bring in the presence of God, at the word of God, and you will see great things happen. Your death situation become alive. Hallelujah. But is that only two things she received? No, friends. When you open the house of God, I'll tell you three more things are there that you can experience from God. You know, there are three more things. But I know you have to do without expectation. <laughs> Please, this is the heart that you should receive. God, give me. I want to do for the kingdom of God. I don't think what I'm going to receive. She never thought she will get this all. You know, chapter 8, verses 1 and 2 speaks what she received. Chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, you will, you will see wonderful things, friend. And, you know, she received guidance from God. She was saved from the famine. Okay. The Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman across and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of Philistine for seven years. Amen? Hey, what happens? You, you want guidance from the Lord? Prepare. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What are the things that will be added unto you? The leading, guiding, protection of God. Hallelujah. God will save you from the famine. World might feel f f famine, but the, the kingdom, kingdom of people from the kingdom of God will be protected from the famine. Hallelujah. Because we know, you know, Job says in, uh, in Job chapter 5, verse 22, he says, I laugh at the famine. Hallelujah. You know, he says, I, you know, that's what? It says, I will laugh at the famine. Can we get that verse? Is it says, is Job chapter 5 verse 22. I believe it's that verse. Should be. You know, let's. Job uh, 5. I'll read for you guys, okay. Uh, you shall laugh at destruction. Oh, wow. 
and famine, you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth. We know the story of Isaac. In famine, he sowed. You go in 26 Genesis and you know he sowed at the time of famine by the hearing and leading of the Lord and hundredfold blessings he received. But in this woman's life, she was saved from the famine. Hallelujah. She was protected. But not only that. This is what, I know, it's, it's not only that. Friends, there are so many wonderful sh things that she received. You know, first thing, she, her barrenness left, gone. She received a, a different kind of faith. You know, I was thinking of mother who is going through challenges right now. Sometimes mother cry for their babies. You know, they are so emotional. You know, they, they, I, I was, just, you know, but she had a faith. Her baby died on her lap. You know, she was, she didn't never become emotional. She believed God. All is well. Amen. Third thing, she received guidance, protection at the time of famine. Fourth thing, she received, and in the same uh, uh, chapter, you know, Friends, when I was reading that, chapter 8, in verses 4 and 5, and you can, then the king talked with Gehaji, the servant of man of God, saying, tell me please, all the great things Elisha has done. Oh, <laughs> you know, this is, this is about uh, Gehaji, okay? Now, Gehaji is the servant of Elisha, Elisha servant of Elijah. Elijah did seven miracles Elisha did 14 miracles. You know, qualification of Gehiji was supposed to be 28 miracles. But he became just a storyteller of the miracles, not the performer of the miracles. <laughs> That's what, what I see here, you know. And she he's, he's speaking about the story. Same moment, you know, as the king, if you, if you see that, oh, if you are in that palace, you're sitting, the king is sitting, and no, not only few people, but it's a huge number of people. It's a crowd. And, you know, suddenly, king says, hey, hey Gehiji, tell me the story. And now Gehiji is speaking about the story that very moment. Listen, friend, what happened? Now it happened as he was telling the king, now he had restored the dead to life. That there was the woman whose son he had restored to life appealing to the king for her house and her land. And Gehaji said, My lord, king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And I was thinking, oh my God, how this happened? There may be so much crowd, there may be so many people, and suddenly, and suddenly, out of that, Gehaji sees that woman and that son, but my, my brother, my sister, is the timing of God. When you do give first place for the kingdom of God, when you open your house, you will never miss the timing of God. Hallelujah. Never. You know, even, you will never miss the timing of rapture because you have given the first place for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometime, Ari, I don't know about you. If, you know, everybody gone and I'm left behind, what will happen? You know, my brother, my sister, if the kingdom of God is the first thing in your life, you will never, meet, you will never miss the timing of God because God's, God's eyes are on your, you. Because God is always thinking of you because you are thinking of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You are thinking about the ministry of God. Not only that, the last thing, Fifth thing I want to share in this story is verse 3 and 6. Now what happened here? It came to pass at the end of the seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistine and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and her, her land. Now it looks like she had gone for seven years and somebody has taken over the land. Somebody has taken over the house. It belongs to her. And she comes after seven years. 
somebody else is doing and i was seeing i was seeing it there was a fight she said no it's mine it looks like her husband is not there okay it looks like she and the son have come maybe you know we don't know he was old age age it's it's not written in the bible i was it's my thinking and then she comes and she comes to the palace the moment she comes you know the spirit of god has put thoughts in king's heart and we i just shared about the timing how the timing was but verse 6 you know and now gage is spoken the women and the son are in front king is looking at situation and what has happened and the king asked the woman she told him so the king appointed a certain officer for her amen i was thinking about that and what happened okay saying restore all that was hers if anything has been stolen of your life god's eyes are on you if you give a place for the kingdom of god in your house your household becomes you know you work for him restore what she restores what she got you know restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now seven years there was a famine she never worked in that land but there was a you know crop that has come seven years she never worked imagine i was just thinking you know the officer and the women and the son they came there was a man who was not ready to give up on the land and when he saw the king's officer his situation my brother my sister you are favored you are favored but do not forget it all started without expectation she has prepared a house she has prepared a place she has she has thought for the man of god she has thought for the kingdom of god she has thought for god this is a holy man of god and god's blessings god's provision god's care came upon her my brother my sister this is the time i just request you we all to stand in the presence of god i do not know what you are going through in your life but whatever god has put in my heart i just i just want to you know say that this is a time maybe in your children's house children's place children's something is missing you are you are trouble with your, about your children there was a time in my life i was trouble for my daughter and the enemy was trying to but you know i still remember it was a six months me and my wife we brought we brought our child on that word that that bed of the god's word and i'll tell you today she's a blessing blessing to the church she's a blessing to the youths she's a blessing to the teens my brother my sister i do not know what you are going through but the lord is speaking to your life allow ask holy spirit lord give me the heart lord i thank Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Holy Spirit, take over. I pray for every family who's here. Whatever they need. This is a church who thinks for the kingdom of God. This is a church who 
things for the mission of God. Lord, we know they will never miss the timing of their promotion. They will miss, never miss the timing of what Lord, your blessings will come upon their life. Lord, they will have a faith, a strong faith in their heart. They will experience God because it starts Thank you, Lord, that this story is written for us. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Srini and the church and the team and the family. They have given themselves for you, Lord. We thank you for this church. Thank you, Baba. People, even as we are standing here, as the word has come, maybe the lady opened her physical home but we make room for God in our hearts, which will enable us to make room for Him in every area of our life. This day, as the servant of the Lord has brought the word, if your answer is an affirmation, saying, yes, God, I want to open it up for you. Maybe I may not prepare a room, but whatever capacity that I am in, I want to be there. Just lift up your hands and just make a fresh surrender. Maybe you're already in the ministry, like me. When I hear a word like this, I scale up my commitment. If you're not there, step into it. If you're there, step up. I don't know if you have to step into or step up, but let's do it today. Amen? Hallelujah. There's a presence of God here. Seek He first the King of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Hallelujah Hallelujah Seek it first Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Righteousness and, not, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your word. 
the lessons we could learn from the life of this woman lord who did unto you unto your servant without expecting anything but god as a wonderful god that you are you not only lord removed barrenness from her when that son died he you resurrected him when the famine came you provided when the famine ended you restored back the seven year fold of everything into her life what an awesome god we have and all began when she made room for you and i pray that every one of us here if we are not into it we'll step into it my father if we are already there we will step up from where we are today we will not make a kind of a vague commitment but will be specific lord maybe i will say i'm going to pray for the mission or maybe i'm going to say i'm going to start giving from this time or maybe you're going to say i'm going to start preaching from today if you are not there step in if you are already there step up amen and father i pray that your presence will come upon us that every one will step in and step up so that we will see the greater things happen into our lives you are such an awesome such a good and such a faithful god we give you the glory we thank you for this word and your presence in jesus name we pray and everybody said amen amen, amen. come on people put your hands together thank god for his word amen thank you pastor sudhir for bringing that word we really appreciate you i'm sure many of us have stepped in and many others have stepped up into what they're doing for god amen may god bless you may you see all the fulfillment of what is god what god is speaking into your lives amen